А это, а как, а что, не, не работает? Что-нибудь нажать? Нет? Здрасте. Вот зеленая. Да. Да. Ой, опять забыл красивую обложечку. Ну, это не важно. Так, ну что, подождать кого нет? Или все, что есть? Ну да. Ага. Ну, то есть так, так оно и было сегодня. Да? Так, ну ой, да. Окей, students. So, today is the secondary introduction, and the last introduction I could manage. Uh, but just decided to, you know, so this scheme probably should start the lectures. Uh, but I, I, I just avoiding your uh, disgusting, dis, you know, disgust against me. So I just decided to put it a bit later. But that's what we actually do, yeah, studying. So that's what we are going to go through. Yeah, this is a cell, different kind of receptors, whatever you can imagine. Different cell, different tissue has a different amount of different type of receptors and the different signaling molecules and something that causes a, a behavioral change of that cell in this particular moment. This effect could be changed another moment. Yeah, this could be another effect in the next day. Yeah, but this is a complicity that we're gonna, uh, you know, like, how do you say, dive, dive into, right? Um, also, I decided to, you know, to spice a bit the theory that I, I giving you in a, uh, during the introduction and give you an example of acetylcholine signaling. So that's, uh, you know, to give you a bit more flavor about how it uh, naturally occurs in the body. Yeah, and then we come back to our like receptors time, like theory, dictionary, words that you should remember and schemes from Alberts, we will. But just a bit, yeah, just to entertain you a bit. Okay, I'll still call it, for example, yeah, so different kind of receptors, nicotinic, muscarinic, yeah, you see here, so this is molecules that are acetyl, that we call it, yeah. Uh, Ketonic receptor, and this receptor we have to hold our body. Uh, basically, this is the main neurotransmitter you could even imagine. It has so many effects. It has, and it depends on the tissue and on the type of your receptor presented on that particular tissue. Yeah? So, like for example, if it is bind to what uh, it's a pacemaker cell, yeah, so like a, um, a, a hard muscle cell, which is a pacemaker cell, which is actually triggering the autonomic heart contraction, it will reduce this rate according to the parasympathetic system theory. Yeah, so this is like a digest, relax or shut it down uh, compared to the uh, adrenergic, for example, uh, neurotransmission, yeah, which is a, a fight or flight. Or it could, this receptor could be on the salivary gland and, and trigger the secretion. Or it could be on the just normal white uh, skeletal white mu muscle cells and it will trigger contraction. These are GPCR receptors, which is our next lecture. These are ionotropic receptors, which is, uh, I don't know, six or seven. That, that lecture, I, I don't remember. Yeah, so the point is different kind of receptors, one signaling molecule, different kind of receptors on a different tissue trigger completely different uh, response. Yeah, and as usual, easy to get. Yeah? Um, to zoom, yeah. I didn't. Yeah. Okay, I should, I should just come. Okay. 
Eh, eh, ah, sorry, yeah, yeah. About this time, okay. Aha. Uh -huh. Good. Then back to here, then play. And then here we are, yeah. Okay. First slide, second slide, <laughs> third slide. Continue. Uh, right, and, and this always will be there while trying to do through the, uh, through the, you know, like every single lecture. It's very good, it's very clear to understand the, the meaning of this perception of signaling by having a pathology of them, right? But, but if you cancel something, it doesn't, you know, went through, it doesn't work, just clearly see how good is that, yeah? So how it must be working. So for example, if you have a troubles with the receptors or troubles, Mm, translations, something, they are not translated. There's a mutation. There is a inflammation on some gland, whatever. Yeah, so, I mean, troubles is whatever you can imagine. Yeah, we're not medics here. We're not diving into that. Yeah, but uh, I mean, troubles is something wrong with the receptors. So there's no receptors or, or very reduced amount of them. Yeah? So if it's in the brain, artificial colon has a huge role, like the main role in a, a cognition, um, emotion like cognition, okay, learning and memory, okay, learning and memory, right? Emotion, um, actually, all, all the drug abuse, uh, yeah, my next slide, okay, this hugely involved article called the receptors, right? Um, then it has on a, if, it, if it's a, something with the receptors on the just normal muscles, like a vi our white muscles, we have a, a condition called a myasthenia. Well, specifically, myasthenia gravis is here, but this is a, a, a different myasthenia. Yeah, this is a different majority of that. Some of them uh, because of the articulation transduction, some of them because of this matrix, you know, the scaffolding prote uh, proteins which hold the matrix to the muscle and then uh, hold the intergreen receptors and all these kind of uh, uh, filaments and microtubules which is involved in the muscle contraction could be different myasthenia. Also, it could be some inflammatory problems because the uh, macrophage also has a. Uh, Artificial colon receptors, pain also could through it or, or um, either it go, going through the opioid receptors, but this contraction is uh, you know like it, it's interacting with the I mean, artificial colon contraction. Yeah, again, we don't need a big detail, but just to imagine how the one single molecule, different picture, different receptors could really make a huge impact on our body. For example. What is it? Ah, nicotine reward, yeah. Uh, for example, if we, because it's a nicotinic receptor, yeah? So if you have a nicotine, uh, not that we can call it, but the, the, the nicotine, the, the, the original uh, ligand of this receptor, uh, activating its receptor, it come and trigger the down, uh, not downward cancer, but it, it activates the other, a receptor site like a glutamate uh, GABA, glutaminergic GABA, ergic, and finally it influences the dopamine neurotransmission and the dopamine firing increase. Dopamine makes work on your brain, expectation, pleasure, all that stuff, which it uh, can lead to addiction, right? And that's how it and that's how it goes. Yeah. And this is a, uh, you know, how important is that that you understand that it's all it's, the, the brain has a, you know, completely complex uh, core interactions of the different dendrite on the one axon, right? So it's a really huge, huge crosstalk all the time. Yeah, but imagine how this, um, it, it doesn't matter for you, yeah, but it's like a frontal cortex, hippocampus, nucleus profundus, yeah, it's like basic anatomy. If this region all, you know, cross talk, you have a problem in one region in, in dopamine neurotransmission, which is a major limbic system, could influence hugely on all our brain and recognition, and expectation, emotion, memory, learning abuse, you know, all, all that high, higher, you know, higher nervous system stuff. Yes, yeah? so how we call it, uh, central nervous system function. Yeah, we call it cognition, emotion, planning. All that stuff. Yeah, so that's why you you should you should recognize very clearly now the um, symptomatic of the smokers, right? So first is high, if you're high, and you increase your metabolism, 
uh, well, metabolism is pretty big, but this is metabolic value, but doesn't matter. You increase your, 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 uh, your emotions, your, your sense, but now it's, uh, you know, it depletes the dopamine and you want more. You know, that's an uncanny addiction. Yeah, I will not go, go into, of course, deep <laughs> addiction um, 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 discussion, but, you know, that's, that's a, should make sense. Also, how you could um, investigate this receptor, how you could talk, from what side you could talk about this receptor. About a different pathway. Uh, like you see here, we, yeah, it's a development of uh, biology, so it's a uh, embryonic development, uh, development biology areas that we may start. Lean hedgehog pathways, we, we're going to talk about those. And um, growth. Um, factor, fabulous growth factor receptors, they all involve through the scaffolding proteins, if you remember, I mentioned them, but we come back today as well. So the scaffolding proteins is one by one interact uh, between each other and influence the uptake of the receptor. Yeah, again, so if, if you want the details, you go to the DOI. It's just an example to give you a flavor how, again, one. <laughs> Visual molecules acting in different types of receptors in the visceral tissue could really play a role in the, uh, many, uh, many aspects of uh, cell detail or our uh, body detail uh, algorithm changes and influence our um, biology. Okay? okay, so this is a kind of a, a beauty now, a boring stuff uh, theory receptors. Yeah, I think we, we didn't finish, we finished that point uh, in the last lecture. So receptors are proteins. They're proteins. Um, they could be a, a majority of them. They are so. If if we come to the the basic biochemistry, the majority of them they are uh, complex proteins, right? Uh, many pro who has many protomers, right? Protomers is a, a subunits which make these complex receptors. Yeah. So uh, also complex um, uh, proteins or complex enzymes could be called those who has a cofactor coenzyme, you know, like stuff like that. But he, here is not about this. It's just uh, you should uh, remember that they have a different subunits and it will be very important because these subunits call, uh, could be called domains and they will be translated differently and then kind of gather in one receptor. And the subunits will be uh, the, you know, evolutionary conserved domains which are kinases and the interactional domains. And again, I'll come a bit later to this. Yeah. This is what we're gonna, uh, again, discuss in the a, in a frames of this um, systemic biology. Yeah. Why are we kind of talking to the systemic biology? Because it's a Pierce, it's here. You know, it's like gene expression and you're fiddling with the micro, um, bacteriophages, uh, caspases, you, you know, like biotechnology, yeah? So it's, it's here. To systemic biology. So anyway, you're gonna stuck to this. Anyway, you're gonna hear this, you know, dictionary, these words. So I just decided to introduce you right now. Question? No. Uh, right. So here should be a membrane, right? Um, and this is the inter how we call it intramembrane domain. And this is the uh, obviously the uh, classical example of G. GCPR, G protein couple receptor. Yeah, so this is a receptor which is a couple, you know, like attached to the G protein. And it's, we will gonna, yeah, talk next lecture, but still, it's a three sub unit, right? It has a GC, GCPA uh, activity, which is hydrolyzed GCP to GDP. And that makes it active and active, active and active. So again, guys, I mentioned it, but again and again, two switches, yeah, phosphorylation, dephosphorylation. Hydrolysis GCP to GDP. This is two main switches in the body to control cascade, to control activity of yeah, self signal. What next? Next is the same, basically, but yeah, okay, so it's just a bit from the other angle. Uh, again, two different, two, two, two main kinds of receptors membrane bound, intercellular. Membrane bound for those two guys who can't make enter themselves which are who? Hydrophilic, yeah, charged. Charged molecule, hydrophilic. Uh, proteins or neurotransmitters, which is a who? Derivatives of the tyrosine amino acid. These are our uh, monoamines, yeah, adrenaline, dopamine, serotonin. 
um, or, or, or growth factors, cytokines, yeah, also, yeah, comes to here. Or for the uh, guys who can penetrate the membrane, the hydrophilic molecule, most of them is the steroid. Most of them steroidal um, hormone. So this is an um, example of the seven, yeah, seven past receptors, which is again the hepatoprotein. But we, we, we talked about the, the difference of these uh, many other types of receptors. It's just like, you know, again, theory. Um, yeah. First approach. And these, uh, the intracellular receptors, usually, well, usually they are uh, like a dimer. And they have a, a, a always have a structure uh, from the cellular domain. This domain could be different size, different variability of amino acids inside this domain, but they always should have DNA binding domain, uh, hormone, yeah? So you recognize the sterile ring, I hope. Yeah, so this sterile ring. So all steroid hormones come from cholesterol molecule, yeah, which is a big, hydrophobic molecule. Uh, this molecule who makes our membrane rigid, more stiff, yeah? So our membranes, they are yeah, like, normally they should be half fluid, yeah? Um, because they hold only by the uh, ionic interactions, nothing, they're not holding like, you know, tightly by the subridges or covalent binding. Yeah, they just stuck together because of the phospholipid uh, uh, head, yeah, polar head. So as more as much cholesterol you put in the membrane, the more stiff it becomes. Yeah, so less um, penetration. Yeah, uh, happening through this membrane. Yeah, so liquidity. Yeah, so liquidity. So cholesterol. Yeah, all hormones come from cholesterol molecules. Uh, yeah, and you have a hint region. Okay, but again, it's cell or whatever. I don't know, eight or nine by the number. Like so, we found that. Uh, yeah, just again, you know, lovely Albert. So the molecules with the conspira usually conspirator proteins come inside the cell, bind the receptors. So here is a is a nuclear receptor, but it's not uh, necessarily the, the case, right? Uh, they, they have they must be in a cytoplasm, but only small number of receptors or uh hormone receptors are uh, uh, coming in the nucleus. Like of course in X X gradual, as I remember. Of course, it's always cytoplasm. Okay, what else? Yeah, again, all about the receptors, but we expand on a membrane bound receptors because it's our first um, kind of list of the um, you know, subjects that are going to fit this probably first five or six lectures. Ionotropic, yeah, ion channel copy, yeah, ion channel copy, so ionotropic receptors. Uh, again, acetylcholine has a, has a has those, uh, which is a in response of, um, yeah, they, they, they usually they, they are, again, they are two proteins, so it's a dimer, yeah, which is a, a, a kind of mimic each other, so they are similar, and they resemble their probably ion channel, yeah. Also, it's a receptor, but it resembles ion channel. Why? Because it puts the ions through, yeah, through the membrane, and that is uh, its uh, purpose, right? So after the signaling molecule binds to that, uh, it changes the conformation, yeah, because uh, what is the binding? It makes some 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 bonds, yeah, um, uh, not covalent, but uh, ionic all these intermolecular interactions, yeah, um, and this changes, of course, the conformation of the whole big. Uh, unit of the receptor, yeah, because it's all amino acids. They change charge here, they change here, it's all, you know, like a cascade, yeah. So it's changed its uh, charges and, and, and structure this way. So this now become open and ions can partake ions, like sodium usually, uh, potassium, if you remember, goes out normally. So this will be for, for, for you know, sodium, potassium, and, and calcium, we're going to discuss. Chlo uh, chloride, yeah, if it's a GABA, for example, if it's a um, um, inhibitory, inhibitory receptors of GABA, uh, they uh, let the chloride ions in and it repolarizes the cell, yeah? So for, for to make a firing in the cell, you have to depolarize it, right? But if chloride 
goes this so make the charge less positive yeah so it's uh, over polarization so it's in inhibition of that particular uh, neuron right but anyway it's a neurotransmission again lecture um decouple protein receptors so you know decouple protein receptors feel good yeah <laughs> No, just just because they they are eighty percent of of our yeah of our signaling goes through decoupled protein receptors as you can imagine uh, they they are um, uh, it's a serotonin uh, cytokines chemokines um, all the monoamines acetylcholine the majority of the molecules go through that yeah so at least if you see something about that you got um, right so there are serotonin here the membrane they have a three subunits and they um, my Clara, my uh, marking pressure decided to show off. Yeah, sorry. Um, here we are. Yeah. Uh, three sub units, which is the um, alpha, beta, gamma, um, and the beta and gamma also play a role, but specific one, but alpha or, or usually plays the majority of the signaling kind of uh, role on this, and it's actually uh, some either enzymes, which is a membrane bound during the adenoid cycle system, as you probably some of you know, or um, phospholipase C, which is an inositol phosphate system. Again, going to call for that. Enzyme type of receptors. Again, uh, dimer. Um, why the enzyme couple? So some of those, um, they are enzymes themselves. Yeah, so they are receptors, but they have a kinase domain. Just make them enzymes, right? Because kinase is a class of enzymes. So that's why they enzyme coupled, or they, um, yeah, they, they should be, they will be called enzyme coupled receptors. But yeah, so some of those, like uh, some of the, them, like insulin type of receptor, tyrosine kinase receptor, they also phospholate each other. So they uh, have a kinase domain, intracellular domain. So all the same, membrane bound domain, uh, acceptor domain, uh, catalytic domain, yeah? Which is a kinase in that particular case. Catalysis, it's, 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 a, it's a feature of enzymes, right? So they make a catalysis of reaction. They cat catalyze the reaction. Yeah, so that's why it's called catalytic domain. So the kinase domain. Or it could be fermin kinase type of receptors, which one domain phosphorylate another, and this another phosphorylated domain become active and then phosphorylate down, down scaffold protein. Yeah. Remember all this crazy cascade of phosphorylation. Yeah. Like uh, probably the most uh, uh, known is the MAP kinase. Yeah. So MAP kinase goes through kinase, kinase, MAP kinase, 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 and then we, we go whatever it takes. Or this could be star kinase, or out, so it can split. So this crazy uh, phosphorylation, all these proteins on the way to the effect, the behavioral biological effect, they call scaffold proteins. Yeah, again, I'll repeat that because it's our uh, systemic biology theory. Yeah, scaffolding proteins or adapter proteins, whatever you want to remember, but remember something. Yeah, so instead of a uh, yeah, you can you can just say, you know, this protein which comes to this protein, but if you can, you know, adapter of scaffolding proteins, it's 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 clear and it's uh, intelligent design. Okay. Um, okay, a bit not in, in place, but uh, yeah, I don't know where to put it. Anyway, um, the response could be uh, fast and slow. Yeah. So what did we learn? Yeah. Okay. What did we learn to this moment? Yeah. We learned about different signal molecules. They could use different type of receptors, and there they trigger some cascade, which usually you usually take, or well, not usually, always take amplification mechanism to trigger some biological response, either in a cytoplasm, or it may serve as a transcription factor. Yeah. By the theory, we could call it a transcription factor if there is some protein activated, goes to the nucleus, sit on the promoter area. And maybe there is some gene transcription. Why not? Yeah, we could call them transcription factors. Specifically, you can definitely call the 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 receptor hormone complex with the steroidal hormone transcription factors. Definitely. And that's uh, called fast or slow. Yeah. So something which happened in the cytoplasm is the momentum 
reaction, like a collagen synthesis or the microtubule growth, or uh, I don't know, some kinase, kinase phosphorylate something, and it's introduced in the membrane and become a channel. So that's minutes, even sometimes it's seconds. But if you trigger the gene expression, they're going to change the uh, what? They, they, they're going to change the uh, protein composition of the cell. And then they're going to change the cell behavior. But this, so to do it could be an hour, but to stay and, and to see the you know, final prolonged effect, it could be even days. It's, I don't know, like, um, OK, the um, testosterone, well, yeah, I don't know the sex hormone. Yeah, sorry, yeah, OK, sex hormone. Testosterone, we need to grow something. Yeah, we are become 13, and we need to grow something very quickly. Yeah, and it, it, it gives this effect. It makes some protein, some, some cascades, but they will develop its effect through days, right? Because the, 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 the teenage organism grows through, through, through days, through years. Right? So, of course, it needs continuous signaling from uh, gland. But it's repeated the signaling, and, and, and one hormone molecule could trigger the, 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 the cascade, which lives for um, the whole day. Um, yeah, and some to also show this to the next slide. Okay, now even more um, boring stuff comes here, but, uh, it, but it, it's good to understand what's going on. Um, yes, this will be, without this uh, precise uh, seeing the, its, its own signal molecule or its own adapter protein in the cytoplasm, it could be no signal cascade, right? Because you imagine our cell, it's a dense soup of, well, of everything. Everything happens all the time. It's a very, very dense something with all many effects. Yeah, and cells always, mm, yes, I even put it here, you know, but yeah, it's good. Uh, so always, you know, kind of choose between all this, um, uh, um, you know, push the, the, the lavine of the signals, it comes to the cell. And even down, when it already comes, it's still choosing between many of them. And it make a priority for some of them. And one of them, they got shut down with a time or with a not enough, um, support from adapter proteins or kinases or something. Yeah, so it's, it's always like you know small tuning um, happening in the cell. It's not. It's not like it's waiting for the signal. One, three, seven, eight. It's done. One thing, no. It's it, it, it always you know like a radio wave. It's always when you 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 trying to catch the one wave. It's always coming here, and you are tuning very very um, uh, slowly to the right channel to make a music to clear to the radio. Right. Anyway. Um, good um, yeah, specificity, okay? So that's, that's what I mean between the normal biochemical, again, background. Specificity because between some proteins and some ligands. It's the same for enzyme and ligand. It's the same for receptor and ligand. And for any protein with a ligand, basically. Yeah, so that's a very basic um, uh, stuff because any protein in a structure has an active sensor which is, it has a bi binding place and a place when the reaction happens. Yeah, so for example, so for enzymes, it's a catalytic function. Yeah, for the receptor, it's just binding domain only. Yeah, but it's always in a very high affinity of this signal or that particular signal molecule to that particular receptor. Saying that, yeah, uh, uh, Okay, this is the same blah blah blah. I think I'll, I'll well, that's just yeah, it's just to remind you uh, the, the interaction we could make with uh, boundaries. Yeah, so it's just reminding you, for example, the cyclic A and B are seen by the protein kinase A, right? And what interaction keeps the cyclic A and B inside the protein, protein kinase A? Ionic, intermolecular interaction, hydro hydrogen bonding. Yeah, it's just, uh, you know, just to remind. So this graph actually, yeah, it's about it. So it's all here, it is in the video set, okay? So this graph actually comes to the next slide probably better. I'm sorry. If we speak about the affinity, we should also uh, divide between so-called um, uh, uh, Michaelis constant, dissociation constant, all this like pharmacy feature they use a lot about the uh, specificity, selectivity, because that's that's um, um, a different between all all this, yeah. And uh, to 
describe that. I, I just give a small picture because they, they give nothing, no information, only describing this word. Nothing to fly, to this, you know, more. Only to describe the affinity better to understand, understanding the affinity chromatography. Yeah, the selectivity better to understand which we, which we, when we discuss the, the some specific receptor system, you know, it's just, it's just an example, okay? So agonists make an effect, antagonists sit nicely, but without effect for you. Um, yeah, I think it is a very pharma, uh, it's just, yeah, let's stay here, yeah? I, I, it, it's not really like a lot about the signaling, but you know, it's, but also well, from the other side, it, it will apply, it will apply because we, um, we are going to go through some drugs, of course, specifically when we come to inflammation, probably or cancer signaling, so we will still come to some drugs. Yeah, and, and it's still it's good to, you know, to be able to understand what is efficacy, like um, this house maximum response, is efficacy, or probably you already know. Um, right, and, uh, selectivity, how you, how you choose your affinity of that specific receptor to some um, off-target protein, yeah, divided to the target protein. So the selectivity, for example, for adrenergic receptors, they could, could bind to different uh, ligands, but with different selectivity. Yeah, so if it comes to um, adrenaline, noradrenaline, or uh, the dopamine, so this receptor will bind first, for example, adrenaline. And the dopamine um, receptors, D1, D2, in a down line, yeah. Also could, could bind uh, adrenaline, but very, with a much, much lower selectivity, but still they could bind for the like sub, sub level uh, ratio. Just because they structurally very similar, yeah. You know, the tyrosine and a different cascade, serotonin, adrenaline, dopamine, melatonin, they all come from one amino acid. The difference between the, the hydroxyl group and the methyl group. So that's why they um, combine the, 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 the neighboring, well, it's not neighboring, okay, but the other receptors. So, um, uh, yeah, but specificity, specificity, when you're choosing uh, from, the, from the number of the molecules with a very similar structure, yeah, and if the specificity is high, it will bind only this structure uh, and will not bind to any other similar structure, yeah? So these things are very, very close to each other, but it's a very deep pharma. Um, I'm not sure how we use this question in the test. I don't think so, yeah. But I'll, I'll definitely, I'll definitely give us something about the basic stuff like agonist and agonist affinity. Um, oh, yes. Now I'm watching my time. I don't think I will be that late as the last time. Oh, 10 minutes. No, we finished. No. We finished. Uh, an hour and 15 minutes. No, we have 15 minutes left. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, 15 minutes left. Okay. 5.10, yeah? 5.10. Yeah. No, the 5.40. 5.40. 5.40. Really? 4.20. Ah, 5.40. Yeah, good. <laughs> okay, I might relax. Um, okay, how to how to finish? Yes, how to finish things? Yeah, because if, if you keep keeping dumping your brain, you know, oh, you stress, you stress, you stress, you stress, you will not be in stress in a, in a three hours probably anymore. Yes, yeah, so you have to finish all that. Or you say high glucose, high glucose. It's not high glucose anymore. So you have to, you know, the ro rolling back. Yes, yeah, to, to to close up the things that you started. And um, yeah, yeah, especially to not waste. Yeah, so that all, all what's happening in our body, it's again unneeded waste of ATP. Because in one simple low, you're not gonna want to spend the unneeded energy. So that that's, it rules every all, all, all our behavior. Okay, so you don't want to yeah keep keep making some proteins or like making glucose up to find the I don't know orangutan because you are not already you know going from some orangutan or you're not having an exam yeah you can uh, calm down the uh, metabolism for example what you could do you could you could uh, use so well not use the cells are developed to use to adopt yeah 
there's a different mechanism of adaptation. And to use a specific mechanism of adaptation, this is negative feedback. So you could, during this cascade, again, it's a theory, right? There should be a, will be a lot of examples, but as you go to the like blocks and theoretical uh, cartoons, let's continue, right? So um, you could develop some specific, to postulate some specific proteins which should be inhibitor of the high up level of during this cascade. Yeah. Um, or it could be a positive feedback. Yeah, when you continue, when you, when you like postulate the protein, which is there, the activators of the downstream cascade. But that part we, we kind of already discussed. In fact. Yeah, you got that. So we, 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 we've been discussing that part. And, and now I just speaking exactly how to finish it up. Or CELC developed, you know, again, it, it was just done evolutionary. And, and I will show you some proof that this all signal cascade really evolutionary can store deep down um, chemical reactions. And the cell developed some specific enzymes which ruined what was developed before. For example, phosphodiesterase, yeah, classical enzyme. It crushes the cyclic, cyclic bonds in the cyclic AMP, which is a very well known, uh, the, the, you know, very abundant second messenger. It, it cr it's crushing the second messenger, right? So this is just all it's a balance between what, how many second messengers you produce and the activity of phosphodiesterase in itself. It's always, it's always, this is present always, and this is present always, almost always. So you, the cell always choosing between the right concentration. Yeah, that's why I always keep in telling you that this, all the time it's a tuning, tuning. It's not yes or no, switch on, switch off. It's always a tune. Um, and on top of that, you know, going even deeper, you have uh, other molecules which influence that enzyme which regulates that cascade. For example, this phosphodiesterase, which could block second messenger, typically, influenced by insulin, and insulin block that phosphodiesterase. But it's influenced by, uh, for example, caffeine, and caffeine trigger, um, all of that. Caffeine inhibits this phosphodiesterase, and insulin activates that. What the purpose? When you drink caffeine, it blocks enzymes, which blocks cyclic AMP. So cyclic AMP always active, always here, and you have an old metabolism, always, always, always making glucose and still gives you this morning like all oh, can think now, right? But insulin, insulin's job, the opposite, it wants to you know calm down and make the glucose in the body and do all this meta metabolic cascade, blah blah blah. Its purpose to shut it down. And it does that. Yes, you see, so that through evolution, when we, you know, grow up from like I don't know, tiny kidney, kidney, whoever, I don't know, who believes in what, who believes in bacteria, who believes in viruses, I don't know. Um, yeah, whatever we originated from, like what it definitely was a one, some one cell organism. Yeah, when we was growing and developing that complex, the signaling cascade was growing with us. Right? Yeah, uh, it comes when we we see about the inhibition, the stop. Of the cascade, we will should discuss also desynthetization, receptor desynthetization, which is again the part of the adaptation. Um, yeah, what does it mean? Uh, simply, its ability to produce response is dropping, so you're not responding that well. Simply, same, right? And that's your again, Larry Albert, with all this mechanism, how to put. Down, push down the receptors to inhibit them, to stop the signal. Yeah, so the many mechanisms. Um, I don't know, I shouldn't go, yeah, I shouldn't go over to them. That's all clear. I think it's very self explanatory. Um, why is happening? Like, for example, you know, uh, the, uh, sorry, uh, again, all body always wants to keep them. There's some here, don't worry. Uh, the, out, the body always wants to keep the balance, you know, homeostasis. And it's even you get uh, like you trigger your, you know, you you put a shape, your emotions or your your sensations to the nice, you know, to make you high. Okay, right now, <laughs> I try to avoid that word, but it's very useful. If you're even making yourself very high, 
like with the some whatever pleasures you you smoking alcohol uh, I don't know um meth whatever yeah it still has a um, border yeah it still has a you know a, a level to after that level your body will will not feel great it's not because you are not feel great you you do feel great like your your neuronal connection but your organism doesn't feel great it, it don't body never wants to feel too much and it'll start to reduce the number of the receptors to whatever you're using again alcohol nicotine whatever some it's called stimulators yeah I'm, I'm using that because it's good to know that uh not to know and to die simply yeah so it's better to know why you could die because of that um yeah, so that's that's a mechanism of desensitization, and and it, your body just starts to produce less and less receptors. But you don't understand it. You want you want it again, and you increase the dose, and you increase the, uh, you know, numbers of whatever you take, or cigarettes, or injections, or whatever. And this called, um, of course, um, um, addiction. Yeah, and this comes to the um, uh, death of the neurons because if you influence if you continually changing your natural matrix uh, processing in your specifically in your brain which is a very uh, gentle and sensitive you're going to kill this neuron because it's not anymore the matrix it used to go through so it's not the behavior it used to have and it's just going to die from the confusion of all this mechanism all this cascade it was involved before but now you kill this cascade and that comes to the um Okay. Well, just again, some something that you you may 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 question regarding that. It's not particularly again our our topic, but um, you know the difference between this and situation and the tolerance, okay? which could be just useful for you. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it's the same about the brain. If you can, just how how you're gonna kill the brain if you want, please. Okay. Yeah. So that's important. So now, now the theory, but it's important theory. Yeah. So as I told you, uh, the most of the cascades are evolutionary, very hierarchic, very conserved. Um, so this is a cascade we are we will be going through, but not not starting. So this 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 um, um, uh, numbers, this continuation is is wrong. I, I'm not going to start with that, but it's just giving this as it was. Yeah, but this is an example of the cascades we will went through. But I wanted to really put your attention now, really. The the attitude to the cascade could be a, a very different, and you you can you may feel lost if you just gonna you know use a, the random information because what is information about the self signaling? Uh, it could be uh, given to you, yeah, from whatever internet, right? In, a, in a absolutely from the different um, point of light, different point of sense. For example, there could be a cascade concern only that primary messenger, only that signaling molecule, and every anything concerned to that, or it could be everything about that particular behavior, like inflammation or self proliferation, or it could be a cascade about only that particular kinase, like some some famous, who is the famous, I don't know, sar sarcoma or AKC, yeah, protein kinase B, AKC, huge amount of the cascades involved, yeah? So it's very good to understand what you're looking at and what the purpose of looking at that cascade, what do, what do I mean, yeah? So for example, this, all this is all signaling that you could just dig your Google and find it, right? But again, that again, what I said. So the, yeah, I know I know you don't see anything, but I'm gonna send you this. Uh, let's go to it back. Yeah. Uh, so this AKC in the middle. So many receptors come to trigger this AKC kinase, and so many um, again the, the <laughs> uh, biological responses are triggered by this AKC. It's an apoptosis, actually. You know, I'll tell you. It's apostolic, the self proliferation, there's some metabolic things about the glucose transporters involved. So many things. Another question on this fast ligand. It's everything about this fast ligand signaling. But again, huge amount of things, things involved, right? And it co interacts. Well, in 
information for the head. So this is information, information, uh, informatory things, so informatory parquet. You are probably more excited, or least excited, I guess, right? Or something. Uh, what they involve to admission molecules, extracting the cytokines, and interact with each other. Yeah, again, another kind of you know line, another attitude to that ap approach to study. Here, development, uh, cell polarization, interaction, or, or development biology. All the different um, uh, cascades, wind, hex, hoax, all, all that stuff, notch, excuse me, hair, what is that? Cancer gas, I see. Okay, so there's something about, uh, about the cancer. Yeah, also, what is it? Sigmoid cancer is here, but it's, com com you know, it's completely different, so you will never ever go the same thing. So, my message to you, yeah, <laughs> just type in the signal cascade or something, yeah? The, everybody will give what they want to introduce you by this signaling cascade, yeah? So this is the, the um, understanding of that uh, term, signaling cascade, is a very broad, okay? So that's my message. This is what dopamine and, uh, dopamine and you know, neurotransmission, I guess. You think about the dopamine, but so many cascades. Is it signaling cascade? Yes, but it's specific to only to dopamine, yeah? So just, I don't know, pro probably it's a very stupid and clear thing, which is good. But I really want to stress it. What else? Oh, very modest slide. I don't know why. <laughs> so, so, yeah, second message is to include. Yeah, so the majority of the, well, the, a lot of the reaction goes with the uh, calcium messaging, of course, which I expand on the fourth lecture, cyclic AMP and as a top five phosphate. Yeah, basically, there's no point to go you know a lot of details because anyway we'll go go through that again and again. Again, the same message: the cell choose between all the all the you know giant amount of information and and signaling proteins and kinases inside and this particular moment. And why we you know till the moment we know um, about different cascades and different scaffolding proteins and all these building blocks which make different cascades but still yes we have a, a huge technological process uh, progress till recently yeah like probably ships cast babies all that stuff that's very cool yeah but yet we were not able to make any system de novo right like some some you know primitive organism de novo from the scratch but we, we have everything in our hands because it's impossible to create a nature because we are themselves are, we are nature yeah and it's impossible to um count how this uh, cascade interact with each other and that particular every moment yeah so this for now it's impossible and i think it's a beauty <laughs> okay anyway from philosophical to what to the real Again, systemic uh, biology. I come back to this. You should remember this from the first lecture. Again, so we're going to study cascades which combine all the scaffolding and adapter proteins, a lot of them, and a lot of names, all this Mark, Stark, Mark. Yeah, you should remember some of them, hopefully, or not. Yeah, it's up to you. Um, but the point is so in the 1990 something, 1991, 90, 93, so like 20 years ago. So some guy, uh, the group, yeah, some group discovered that all these scaffolding proteins have a re repetitive domain. They all have SH2, SH3 domain and a kinase domain, which is an interaction domain and a kinase domain, all of them. And different kinases and different scaffolding proteins combine these domains differently. So that thought, and I really pretty much like this, their, their, their theory about that evolution played with these building blocks. And it played with all this, uh, you know, combination of that different uh, domain translation. Yeah, making different kind of kinases. Yes. Um, yeah, that's what I mean. Again, we come as I, uh, again to the, what I start from. Two species, kinases, Integrated, some positive feedback, negative feedback, and then we can play with that, yeah? So different, combine different structures and influence the uh, some effects of protein, 
by combining these different scaffolding uh, proteins. Yep, I know, I know, I know, it's just a bit confusing, but you know, uh, probably uh, evoking the real receptors like adrenaline, insulin, you know, growth factors, it could be a nice way to understand. Yes, I get right, or it's some highly prescribed information on some protein. Eraser, when we go back to some phosphatases, which changes that, and the reader is already what's making the impact you're reading this information. And you bind, uh, the, if you're a phosphatated binding domain, you bind to some another scaffold protein, yeah? Like RAS, SOS, MAP, CASI, yeah? RAS binds to SOS, um, uh, um, SOS, seven, oh, seven years, yeah? This protein. And then another kinase, 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 kinase. Yeah, so this is how they can. Yes, so, but by that theory, theory right? The, the, yeah, the yeah. guys made a theory. They call the writer, so the um, the kinase who phosphorylates some protein. So it writes the information on that protein. Reader. Reader. So reader, reader, yeah. So we phosphorylate that particular protein. This protein becomes, for example, active. Yeah, active. And that, this protein usually is a binding domain to another scaffold protein to continue that, you know, one by one, blah, 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 whatever, map, kinase, 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 map, blah, 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 and then uh, stat, and then some prescription factors, and, you know, on and on and on and on. So these are the, the readers who finally delivers the, continue the, this message, yeah, to deliver the message, yeah? This is a, this is a, you know, um, kind of short, short scheme of that theory. Um, applying this theory to the, the, the real CASI, it could be many writers, readers, and uh, erasers, of course, down the signaling CASI. Yes, it is one block that, that describes this part, basically. Uh, I could probably, you know, for, for example, we have a like white card network of kinase. And by, you know, the research stuff, fiddling in the lab, we could take another, um, in this case, that will be who? Eraser. Because what? The array, they change what the writer does. Yeah? So they change this phosphorylation because it's kinase. But we change here and we add what we add ubiquitination or histone acetylation. Yeah, and we change, we, we kind of, you know, introduce it to this cascade and we can see how we change the response. These things are completely, you know, research-wise. Yeah, they completely uh, about, not about the uh, uh, biology or, or uh, nature or physiology. They, it's completely research-wise. Yeah, so how are we gonna play you know, we want this and that, you know, it's just really, it's a research, yeah? So it's research. It doesn't, because the nature already done that many times. The nature already done. We, we, we combined of all these different writers, erasers, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, the, the clever guys decided to call like them, to be, to be able to manipulate by this, you know, you know, uh, word, yeah, meaning to continue changing that nature, you know, to continue play like a nature, to continue playing with these different uh, writers, writers, yeah, kinases, scaffolding, proteins, yeah. So, because it's just, yeah, it's a, it's a, well, why are just always keeping to this, uh, systemic biology, you know, this building involved and blah, blah, because it's, it's really described as cell signaling nice, and it's here. It was delivered, you know, uh, seven years ago, like, where, you, you know, it started 20 years ago, but it's now very high, you know, like uh, 10 years ago was a nanomaterial, no, 20, nanomaterials high up. Yeah, everybody was crazy and need to put the money, got some research with different gels and put the cells in and out and the drugs in and out all this. So now it's just this crazy thing to the systemic biology. That all, that only that's why I'm introducing it to you. Because you are our hope. And you know, okay. Um, Um, again, one um, a kind of confirmation. We come uh, to the yeast, you know, all of a sudden, yeah, it should be at the beginning, probably. <laughs> but 
but I come to the to the simplest one in the end. This is the least uh, particular system. So the two main systems they use for mating and for coping with osmotic um, environment for the changing uh, the osmolarity of their environment when they 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 happen. And the different map K map kinase cascade involved. They're all map kinases, but they different types of the map kinases. And the different type of protein uh, attached to this map kinase. So when you have a mating pheromone for another um, uh, mademoiselle is, and you want to start mating with cross. You've got triggered that cascade. Yeah? If you have a change in osmolarity, you've got another cascade. So those guys from the previous slide, well, it's a different group, but still the same idea, right? So they want to play with that and they combine different kinases and they combine, they combine, combine like they were in years where you stand for that. But they find a chimeric couples which start yeah, as you see yeah, from this and that is that. So what they got, they really got the uh, osmo response by the pheromone, yeah. So they go all this over, uh, you know, over the head. They, 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 the signal was one, but the end, the effect was from the other cascade, not from that cascade. Which you won't accept or not. It's a kind of very hard confirmation of that, you know, theory that you really can play as a nature did for us, you can play with the scaffolding protein probably. And what is the use? Of that, mm -hmm. well, as usual, as usual, the uh, answer is a therapeutic wise. Mm -hmm. that, that's a, yeah, that's a major, majority of, of the researchers input and researchers wishes and, you know, all this money we spend for the research. Therapeutic, yeah. For example, well, you know, the hunter, yeah, you all, you probably, most of you study cancer, hijack many signaling cascades. So proliferation, migration, hijack, wind cascade, rust cascade, jack stat cascade also hijacked by cancer cells. So you uh, study that cascade and you see probably, and you try, no, 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 you see, you try to, you know, target different on a different level different scaffolding protein and who know you'll be lucky you you inhibit this cascade you got out of the cancer it's a very tough theory but that, that's how we could possibly use it that's what i see but it's not, not yeah so other other guys they just like to um to play this thing you know that the, so that the specifically in my in my time there was absolutely academic science that just we we started things because we, we were wondering, you know, why not? We wonder who we are. We wonder wh why we got like this. And um, yeah, probably that's, um, so again, it's about this learning by knowing, you come to the end. You push me to now, it's like, yeah, learning by knowing or, or, or designed in you. Yeah, so that's uh, simply. Um, you can skip that just for the wondering people. It's, it's, a, it's a just particular, publication when they you know you see the same stuff basically yeah so they describe how they did it how they uh, develop different these building blocks and the linkers um so actuators is how you it's a it's a uh, green fluorescent protein yeah yellow fluorescent. so this is how you how you can see what you've done because you know the the, the the complexity of the science yeah you can do something but you have to visualize that most of all you have to confirm by the statistics that you did visualize the right thing that your graph will go very here in a nice mood and you, you know, push this publication. So that's a very important part to visualize what you've done and to see the clear difference. And just, yeah, how they play with it. So they got some protein, which is responds to the light, I think. And then they trigger, as I remember, some cascade, which responds to only that light or something else. Yeah. But it's just for, for those who are interested, it's just very detailed and complicated. Uh, publication for really uh, those of you who, who care about them, yeah? but there's not the point, of course, of uh, our um, like testing or exam. Pathology. I'm I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure that uh, I'm going. 
Um, yeah, you know, because we finally we decided to exclude the toxins from the program that I just because I already have this information. It's good to know. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, we're still deciding will the toxins will be included in the testing because we chopped them off the program. But anyway, it's just, just a nice to know that toxins, there are some um, uh, chemical molecules, yeah, which interact again with the uh, signaling uh, cascades and the different, like this is the most famous one, of course, this uh, Bazella Petrucci, the, um, the, the, the toxin from Echerichia coli, E. coli, yeah, and pseudomonia, like this, um, which, which uh, uh, induce the uh, pneumonia disease toxins. So different one, and they usually they hijack interfere yeah because they all are protein nature they hijack either again g cup g protein couple receptors or some gtpases or some kinases but, but nothing around that yeah so we have only uh, this highlight this targeted point during this um, cascade again if you uh, if you yeah really interested this is a big review uh, onto most um, abundance uh, toxins and the explana explanations how they go to the cells. Yeah, so again, some of them use, as I told before, but some of them uh, hijack the channel or they block the channel or something. Yeah, and then how some of them go to the uh, uh, mitochondria, how some of them using the cyclic AMP uh, signaling and uh, hijack the endoplasmic reticulum and calcium signaling and then you know, go destroy the cells with this osmotic pressure, like many mechanisms. But again, I, 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 don't, I don't think I need to expand a lot because it's even not clear whether we use this information or not. But yeah, you're free to, that's interesting, yeah. Um, yeah, so um, we have uh, some toxins. It's actually, it was new for me as well. Um, that hijack the uh, normal phospholipase A2. So phospholipase A2, it is some of, well, it's lipase, yeah, which broke um, your, so which, inter, which make the cascade uh, um, on a way of synthesizing your prostaglandin, your tissue hormone, yeah? Um, Leukotriene, thromboxane, prostaglandin E, you know, probably the stuff from, from biology. And, and they mimic, mimic, they synthesize some kind of phospholipase, which mimic the normal house, house like a host, phospholipase C, um, perturbating all this eucosanoid synthesis you put here. Um, Arachidonic acid, yeah, which you chop all the membrane and then you synthesize it all that variety of different prostaglandin. Yeah, which is a, a, a big families of that. Yeah, some of them. So they, 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 most of all, they regulate, well, they regulate all metabolism, but a lot of the inflammatory process. If you make a long story short, right? And that's yeah, one of these uh, toxins from from snake, snake and snake, yeah, snake and bee venom. Yeah, they contain this um, specific phospholipase. It's, uh, yeah, this thing's just interesting. Yeah. Um, right to to finish. Of course, we we will um, talk when I um, expand onto the specific um, uh, signal cascade. Yeah. Um, uh, when it's applicable, we will go through the drugs which influence this cascade. But again, I'm not sure, probably this another guy will talk about that. But it's a bit confusing between this pharma, whatever you have, and my uh, lecture, we'll see. Okay, uh, but this is a, uh, some examples, yeah, of this cascade, epidermal growth cluster of cascade, sarcoma kinase cascade, VEGF again, vascular endothelium growth cluster cascade, um, and core receptors, yeah, her, uh, yeah, cancerogenic receptors. So, specific cascade that uh, we have um, drugs inhibited one or another protein during that cascade. As I see from the name, so I think I, I don't know why I didn't call it. So, I think it's from the cancer research. It looks like, yeah, because it didn't. Yeah, it looks like an anti cancer drug. But um, a lot of, yeah, 
you you pro yeah you probably uh, because you're sports you already make a, a diploma work yeah so most of them use a diploma about some anti cancer drug so I mean at least which I got from the last year students they use the stuff um, and 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 uh, um, yeah and then many many of the drugs and many of the pharma companies use the kinases of course and develop try to develop inhibitors for the different kinases because it's a, they are make a majority of the uh, signaling yeah, information to, to cells so and that actually uh, you know just for them so yeah so of course like there's a billion scam and it rises and it rises each each year so it's a lot of a lot of money spending for developing uh all the jobs again uh, of course it's named not for memory it just probably some computers on that do the work in the lab um or something so i was rushing so so uh, strong that i even finished earlier but good for you guys yeah we finish here so the next Will be about the G couple protein receptors lecture. Two lectures on GPTRs. Did you get a final program? Вам послали наконец-то, что я буду. Ну я не знаю. Я думаю ничего страшного. Нет, если вам не надо, пожалуйста, просто некоторые подходят, говорят, а что, что вы вообще проходим то? Может, одному из нас что-нибудь послать? Да, да, давайте. А кто, а не знаю, кто у меня есть. У меня была вот эта девочка из лавы, черненькая. Я вот... Да, 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 Аня, наверное, да. Да, если... А не Зима, да? Ну, давайте... Я... Но она не черненькая, в общем. Но волосы темные. Ладно, ну хорошо. Но не зелененькая. Нет, зелененькая сегодня нет. Зелененькая я точно помню. Да, 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 точно, Маш. Да. Да, так, я ладно, все, stop share, share, да, я все stop. Все, все. все хорошо. Вот же она, вот на картинке. Да, это я, здравствуйте. Да, да, да. А вот вы меня слышите? Да, да, слышим уже. Сейчас вот я тебе пошлю уже вот файл, ты дождалась.